Hey, what's up guys, Ara here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 147 today for the finale, the season finale of season 7 of this career mode here, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. It is all down to this. Four points separate myself and Pierre Gasly. He leads me by four points in his Red Bull Honda to my Alfa Romeo Sauber, and so we've got all the work to do here at Yas Marina. We're on the back foot, remember, as well, because technically on paper, our car is the fourth or fifth best car on the grid, and the Red Bull is the second best but obviously in recent races it really has been just a duel between me and Gasly uh, you know kind of everywhere around the grid uh, and so Brazil was a, a crucial race in terms of for Gasly to get the lead back we had a nine point lead initially and then after Brazil he just somehow pulled out a miracle race from outside the top 10 to win that Grand Prix and so he comes into this with four points ahead of us but before we get into the actual racing itself for this episode before we go uh, the transition from season seven to season I've seen a few people questioning where we've been spending points in terms of the R&D reset. So here you go. I have been spending every single one of my resource points that I have earned so far this season on altering the car in terms of adapting parts for next year. You can see I've done a nice even spread. I've done quite a lot on the chassis side, but also some uh, decent stuff on the aerodynamics. I've concentrated on the major and ultimate upgrades towards the end of the trees because the miners will take less time to do. And also a few reliability upgrades on the gearbox mainly and the general wear but uh, we spent all the points so far, so it's not like I've not been spending the points uh, throughout the the, uh, the season. I've just not really been showing you guys in the episodes, but if you were curious, here's a kind of quick look at that. But we're going to go straight into this then, into qualifying Q1 at Yas Marina, and so we've got one final race to try and get the job done on Gassi, but it is going to be a tough one. Also for the constructors, it's also a decider between Sauber and Red Bull here today. Myself and Leclerc and Gasly and Verstappen here, but Q1 pretty straightforward for myself to get through into Q2, but unfortunately, surprisingly, Leclerc did not make it out of Q1, so already for the team's championship, a dagger has been stabbed into our heart, because Leclerc out of Q1, that's going to be a massive recovery drive already for him, and Yas Marina, obviously, it's not the easiest place to pass. How many times historically in real life Formula 1 have we talked about it being a very tricky place to pass, and it is the same thing in the game as well, because the tyre wear is also a bit of a nightmare around here, so that is already going to be a disadvantage for us as well for the driver's fight because it means I don't have a teammate, a tag team person to help me out because remember how how well Leclerc helped me out in, in USA by holding up Gasly so I've already lost my partner in crime so that's unfortunate but we go through into Q2 then and we do the job in one lap very efficiently to get through into the top 10 shootout there both Mercs join us, the two Red Bulls unsurprisingly, the two Renaults and also one McLaren and Toro Rosso Ocon uh, of, the, of the two Toro Rosso making it through, Van Dorn just outside in P11 there. So now into the top 10 shootout then. The the, uh, the sun has truly fallen down here in Abu Dhabi. The floodlights are fully out to light up the circuit and so now it's go time and we need to get the job done. We've uh, got two sets of hypers to use thankfully because we got through both times on one set of hypers. So we can go for two fresh uh, runs here. So through the last corner then, a little bit wide uh, on that last apex but I was actually massively understeering in turn one that first run. So in uh, the second attempt you can see already gaining just a, a decent amount of time just through the first apex alone because I just went a lot tighter but by the time we get to the end of the lap unfortunately I actually lose time and I'm slower on this second run so this will not be an improvement at the moment we're P4 though ahead of Gasly already but across the line it's not an improvement my first lap was faster but for us there it's going to be a great day in the office P4 there and ahead crucially of our championship rival Pierre Gasly in P5 the staff in P3 the two Mercs around the top uh, uh, you know lock out the front row so that's good for me because hopefully those two can run away with it and don't give uh, Gasly any sort of chance. Surprising, actually. He's not managed to match and beat Verstappen because uh, th throughout this entire season, consistently, Gasly has been the faster man compared to Verstappen in this season of career mode. So, a bit of an odd one there. Maybe the pressure getting to Gasly a little bit. Obviously, it's his first major championship fight, remember, ever in his career here in this career mode. So, we'll see how it goes. But let's go to the grid. Feeling positive already. We've done one job. Ticked half the... We've done half the job. We've beaten Gasly in qualifying. But now, crucially, we need to get ahead by not only one more position. We need to get ahead by quite a few because we have to try and get four more points than him in this championship. So it's a, it's going to be a tough order, but uh, never say never in Formula 1. We fought this hard in an inferior car. We keep on going for one more race, one more 50% race. Let's get into it then. Let's go to the grid. So here we are, ready to go racing for one final time this year. Another season of victories, controversies and rivalries lies in our wake. 
and just one challenge remains here in the United Arab Emirates on a circuit that made its spectacular debut back in 2009. Welcome to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We have 21 corners here at Yas Marina circuit with 10 to the right and 11 to the left for a total lap distance of 3.4 miles. Two long straights open up some passing opportunities into the chicanes and we can expect average lap speeds of around 123 miles per hour. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the engineer. That was a solid result in their last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. And so with that, for the final time this season, let's look at the starting grid ahead of the Grand Prix today for Abu Dhabi at Yas Marina here, the championship decider between Pierre Gasly and myself. And thankfully for us, there are no grid penalties to speak of. It is a front row lockout for the Mercedes guys of Hamilton on pole, Verstappen P3, myself in P4, Gasly in P5, so the two rivals right next to each other, almost on the grid. Ricardo P6, Alonso P7, Ocon P8, with Carlos Sainz of Van Dorn rounding right in the top 10. Hartley P11, Magnussen P12, Grosjean and Valtteri Bottas next, with Charles Leclerc down in P15, with Vettel in P16 with a grid penalty, Raikkonen P17, Sergei Sorokin 18th place, and the last row of the grid is Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez. Let's do this then, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Right, so here we are on the grid, and like I said, thankfully there's no grid penalties uh, this time round to alter the kind of championship fight. It's a straight fight here from P4 and P5 for myself, and Gasly would have been a bit bittersweet if he got a grid penalty uh, for this race. Probably quite tactical for him then to, to make sure he had the penalties out of the way and not have it for this one. But it's going to be a two-stop then here at Abu Dhabi. Hypersofts to the two ultras, but we know the job. We need to try and beat Gasly by four points, so let's get into it then. The finale of Season 7 here. Who's going to win, Gasly or myself, as we go to five red lights for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The lights are out and we're underway. A lot of wheel spin for Verstappen there on the right hand side. So a good getaway into turn one. Can we go up into P3? We dive it down the inside of the Dutchman there. A former teammate from Red Bull. But alas, he's able to keep it around the outside. So he gets back up into P3. But meanwhile, look there behind. The papaya orange McLaren of Ricardo is up in P5. Gasly's been overtaken by the Aussie man. And so Ricardo's done us a massive favour there. So Gasly down to P6. It's still a 1-2 for Mercedes, and so all is well in my world at the moment, and we're going to try our best to keep up with the Stappen, but I don't know about that. That Red Bull car and the Mercedes are very quick, but uh, as starts go, I can't complain. Didn't lose any positions, and Gasly lost one, so that's already a bit of aid towards our championship bout, but uh, Hamilton as we move on through the laps, and Hamilton's still in P1, Hulkenberg in P2, Verstappen still in P3, and now there has been a bit of a gap that's grown to myself in P4, but the good news is Ricardo is still there in P5, and Gasly only now is maybe trying to size up a move. DRS open here, so it's lap number three. Gasly, can he go for a move? He's going to go to the inside. No, he did. Decides to go to the outside. He's tapped Ricardo. And I think a bit of carbon fiber just flew off there. Looks like Gasly uh, kind of got confused at which way he was going to go, to the inside or outside. And instead, he just plowed into the back of Ricardo. And I'm pretty sure he has some end plate damage for, I think, the third time now in the last five episodes here. And so is this the pressure coming on to Pierre? As you can see there on the left-hand side, he definitely has no end plate there on the left of his wing. So that is going to be massive help for me. You saw how far he, uh, how far he fell in USA without a bit of end plate on his car. And so that's going to be another bit of help so so far things are going our way and it's looking good our engineer wants us to pit a little bit early on lap number five i will oblige because these tires are going off quite quickly the hypersoft's not very great meanwhile here is gassy now struggling he's fallen away from ricardo now he's being un under attack by his fellow frenchman esban ocon there in the junior sister Toro Rosso car and the Toro Rosso has waltz around the outside there is ricardo and that is the gap then to now what is gassy swamped by the Toro Rosso and the two renos of carlo Sainz and Fernando Alonso here. So this is great news for me. Gasly is going to go down even more. And there goes Sainz. I think that is on the right-hand side. Round the outside. Might make it three abreast. Nearly is a... It's actually Alonso. My apologies. Alonso with a big old dive. Fair play. Fernando there. The double dive to make it a double pass into that chicane. Round the outside the Toro Rosso. And Alonso will be up into P6. And now it's three wide between the other Renault, Carlos Sainz, the Toro Rosso. And also the Red Bull of Gasly. And Gasly fighting back, actually. Fair play. He's going side by side with Carlos Sainz, but Sainz will have the better room down the inside, and so Gasly 
eventually will be overtaken by two cars, but actually, surprisingly, Ocon ends up three places back from where he initially was. As we now move back to our POV, it's now lap number five, and we're at the end of that, onto lap number six, and we're going to come in for that earlier pit stop there that my engineer wanted me to do. I obliged because, like I said, the tyre wear was pretty horrendous. The Hypersoft's not working too well, and so let's try and get a bit of an undercut here on the Ultrasoft tyres. It looks like it's pretty much a ghost pit lane because it looks like we're the only guys that have decided to come in this early, so I hope that's not a bad sign. Uh, I think the undercut should work pretty well. It's just about if we catch traffic or not as we go down. Obviously, the very unique pit lane exit underneath the circuit before coming back out then on the outside of turn two and three, and we're in last place now. Lance Stroll just ahead of us in the Williams car, so let's try and catch up to him, but after him, there's a lot of clean air. Let's put down the foot to the pedal, get the rich mix and hot lap mode going on, and let's try and see if we can try and close up to Verstappen and the two Mercedes cars as we try Try and maintain P4 and try and better it for any kind of championship advantage here. And so to that effect, we're closing up on Lance Stroll there. The Canadian round the outside will go on the right with DRS open there. Slam on the brakes, but he's actually still there. Proximity arrow on the left-hand side. So we have to try and jostle for position. We're up into P19. Bit of a train there up ahead of us. And because of this, Gasly going even slow. He's now been overtaken by Leclerc, my teammate, who's re recovering this Grand Prix, remember. And Gasly's going very slow. I suspect this can't just be wing damage. I think he's got an issue with this car, a mechanical issue. And I can confirm my engineer actually did say whilst I was catching up to Lance Stroll uh, you didn't see it on the video but like he did say the, uh, that Gasly's car has some sort of issue and he's going slowly so he's got front wing damage and he's got mechanical issue right now the F1 gods are favouring me and all the luck is coming my way as we go down the inside of Lance Stroll and now look to overtake Sergio Perez maybe switch it to the inside on the left a bit of contact made with the Mexican as there's a huge bunching up domino effect here as Gasly's going that slow the two Ferraris Vettel and Raikkonen scrapping away for the wooden spoon but here we come now we're only three cars away from overtaking Gasly having already made our first pit stop and he is yet to do so so this has come into our way a massive way so here we go now trying to overtake Raikkonen to the inside there big old dive to the inside of the ice man can we make it work there he's going to keep it to the inside so we're going to have to break early try and do a bit of a Rosberg switch back here and go to the inside now on the right hand side Raikkonen still though give me a good fight there I'm surprised how how fast the Ferrari car is in a straight line, but DRS neck and neck. There's a car going slowly, and we made contact. Raikkonen squeezed us into the car. I had nowhere to go. We've now lost a bit of our end plate, ironically, and now we've got massive issues there because I've lost all sense of grip off circuit because the car just won't turn in. Every left-hander now is going to be a nightmare with no right end uh, part of our front wing, and the Williams car is now trying to overtake us. We're desperately trying to slow this car down. I nearly punt the, Ferrari, the, the Williams car off the circuit because the car's got no downfalls. I mean, look at that. Full opposite lock and the car won't turn. It is like a literal Sauber boat at the moment. Soropkin's overtaken us for the first time ever in this career. We're around the outside and now we have to dive into the pit lane for an extra pit stop now on lap 7. We don't even make it into the pit lane properly as we crash off the rest of our front wing on the pit entry because I literally couldn't make the turn. We were completely on top of the world there. We're about to overtake Gasly potentially after having made already one pit stop but now I'm on my second pit stop. Gasly's coming on this lap for you can see behind for his very first pit stop in this Grand Prix. He's changed his front wing so he's got a fresh one I now have to make a front wing change and get a fresh one. But this is my second stop of the night. Not my first, like Gasly there. I don't know. I think Gasly still has issues with his car mechanically. So we've still got that going for us. So I'm still confident we can try and catch back up to him. But right now, Gasly's still ahead of us. And now both of us are way down the order in the bottom three in this race. P19 for myself. Carlos Sainz was the car we crashed with in P20. I don't even know why, why he was there going so slowly. I assume uh, it's some sort of issue for him. Maybe he was retiring or well, had some sort of puncher or whatever, but he's P20, Gassi's P17, but as it stands like this, this isn't good for me, because if both of us don't score points, then he wins the championship, Gassi does, because I need to get four points on him, and right now, we're the furthest away from points that we ever have been in this Grand Prix so far. But having a look now at replays, Carlo Sainz was going slowly due to a front right puncher there, and he just, I don't know, he was being really stupid, I don't know why he didn't park it up on the right and go off circuit to trundle along, because he was so dangerous, and then from Kimi's uh, perspective there, Kimi just didn't give me any room whatsoever. He has about half the track 
on his left hand side of him and yet he continues to squeeze me to the right and so as we pause it here I'm caught up in the middle I'm trying to turn a little bit left but otherwise I'm going to start pushing Kimmy but going back on board with him look how much room Raikkonen has on the left hand side there I don't see any logic of why he couldn't give me more room he saw the car there I saw the car but it was so last minute but he still could have pulled left to help me out a little bit but no he just continues to squeeze me to the right and so we have a all well uh, not an almighty crash but a crash nonetheless it could have been a lot worse actually to be fair so I count my lucky stars we could have crashed off our entire front right tire and I would have had a DNF in this Grand Prix thankfully just the end plate of the of the of the wing but still absolutely horrendous I don't know if Riken still has any kind of bad blood from where we when we were Ferrari teammate back in season four but uh, I don't know whatever the case we've now got a recovery drive to do of our own P19 still we're now catching up to Sergio Perez who's been overtaken by Gasly so I'm still not sure if Gasly has that mechanical issue solved. He had the front wing issue and the mechanical one. He fixed the wing obviously in his pit stop but I don't know if he's still going slow due to that uh, car issue itself. So he now dived it down the inside of Sergio Perez. Very nice move there on the inside with DRS and now we can close up on Gasly. We do close up right up to him uh, through the last corners on that same lap. So look how slowly he's going. He's still got a mechanical issue in the car. So we go down the inside. I don't know what I don't know if he's lost turbo power MGH or K or whatever the case is but he's going slowly. He's got a front wing on him but that's not going to help him too much if he's going so slow every single straight and so we're up into P16 now and now we've got a mega job because look at the mini map there. There's literally nothing going on. We've got to try and catch up to the two Ferrari cars as we just get ahead of Bottas there who comes in between myself and Gasly. We now move on to lap 12. We're starting to close up finally to Raikkonen once again. We've got two cars in the pit lane so we'll gain two more positions in this Grand Prix. Up into P14 this will be uh, as we go through turn one and now we'll try and close up on Raikkonen to make a P13 hopefully soon enough. Not mention it yet but obviously that second pit stop we made we went on to another set of ultras. Gasly did the same so at the moment I'm not too sure what the plan is. I'm going to just take it by kind of as we go and kind of see the situation here but I think there might need to be a scenario where we try and stretch these tyres all the way to the end of the Grand Prix if I want any chance to get some good points in this race to beat Gasly in the championship but we'll cross that bridge once we get to it and we'll see. First and foremost I'm just pushing like a stabbed rat at the moment here on lap 14 trying to overtake Raikkonen he actually gave, uh, gave me a very good fight in the first sector there unfortunately and so we have to try and overtake him now on them uh, in the straight line very easily done so though into that chicane and so now we move on to lap 16 then and we're closing up to P11 is Kevin Magnussen so right now we still don't even have any points and so hopefully I can catch up to the day my very first teammate in this career mode to try and get into the points paying positions and then get a move on trying to get those four points we need for this championship but we go across the line now Vettel I think that is in the pit lane yes he is so up into P10 now and so coming over to take Magnussen for what will be P9 and two championship points but meanwhile Gasly is also sticking with us now in P11 behind me on the mini map there so I'm not sure I don't know if Gasly's now got his issues sorted in the car I, I, my engineer's not saying anything but here we go now down the inside of Magnussen very nice uh, tasty move and we're through up into now what is P9 in this Grand Prix two championship points to us Leclerc my teammate has just made his second stop of the afternoon and he's just ahead of me ahead of him are the two Toro Rosso cars one of them is yet to pit which is this man Esmen Ocon Van Dorn has pit in this Grand Prix so far so I've got my teammate and I've got potentially uh, coming up two Toro Rosso cars who have just made their pit stop soon enough and so that is going to be a bit of a tough task but let's just see how it goes as we now move on to the beginning of the next lap and there goes Van Dorn through turns one Leclerc just behind him but where is Esben Ocon then where will he filter in into this fight then Van Dorn there is Ocon I think just in the background there so it's Van Dorn Ocon Leclerc in uh, P8 up to uh, P6 this is I think that is and so Leclerc right up the chuff of Ocon here so if Leclerc can maybe dispatch of these two and then leave me with some clean air to catch up the Toro Rosso cars that'd be ideal because even though I am on much worn tyres compared to the Toro Rosso cars I am still faster because the, the, the Sauber car obviously has the pace over the Toro Rosso and meanwhile we filter all the way back through flicking through the replay camera desperately trying to find Gasly he's made another pit stop in this Grand Prix so we both came onto ultra soft tyres but Gasly has decided to go for a second pit stop now in this Grand Prix and so he's all the way back into P19 again with that pit stop he's just made so I've still got two championship points in my name Gasly's 
all the way back in P19 with zero points now. So I really need to pray Leclerc can help me out and overtake these Torosso cars. And then these to two Torossos, if they fight, which they look like they're getting to because they've got DRS open and trying to slipstream each other, I need to pray these two Torosso cars, Ocon and Van Dorn, fight like no end because then I can catch up to them and then I can try and overtake them and get those crucial four championship points. And that is exactly what they're doing right now. Ocon, Van Dorn, side by side through that first chicane there in this lap. And so as we go on to this camera shot, there is Leclerc. Those are the two Toro guys. And there I am. We are closing up to them. They're losing ground to Leclerc. This is looking very good at the moment. If I was to overtake both of these cars, I would get up into what would be P7 in this Grand Prix. That would be six points in this championship. Gasly's down at the moment, all the way down in P18 or 19 or you know, just outside the points, basically, with zero points. And so if I can overtake these two Toro Rosso cars and get this uh, tyre to the end of the Grand Prix, I would win the championship. So we start this race off looking very, very good. All the luck was going our way. Then it completely flipped on its head. I was behind Gasly, both out of the points, and it was looking like Gasly was going to win the championship. But now it's coming back to me now. I've kept the faith in. We're at 21. We're seven laps away from the end of this Grand Prix. And these two Toros are going side by side again, and they almost touch and take each other off circuit there. And so they massively lost time. And so Van Dorn on the inside, Ocon on the outside there. And here we are now, sizing up this move. DRS is going to be available to us there. Overtake mode, rich mix. And so here we go. This is the moment. Could we overtake these two cars and get up into the crucial P7 we need for six championship points? Here we go to the inside now of one car of Ockham. Van Dorn's locked up. Yes, we've done it. Up into P7. Van Dorn locked up horrendously there with the pressure. And so it's myself in P7. Ockham behind me. Then Van Dorn. And then it's the two Haas cars in P9 and P10. We've done it. We're up into P7. Ockham though dies around the outside. But we go very defensive there. Squeeze them out completely. We maintain P7. And now this is the task at hand. We've got seven laps remaining. The tyre wear really isn't too bad there. And remember back all the way to season five in Ferrari at Bahrain. Where I took those tyres so long to win the Grand Prix. That is what we need to do. Because Gasly is all the way back here in the second sector still. Outside the top ten. Outside points. So all I need to do now for seven laps is just take these tyres. Nurse them to the end of the Grand Prix. I've got a huge gap ahead of me. The Torosos are still squabbling behind me. So I've just got to now take it nice and easy. Take home these six points and take the championship home. It's been an absolute roller coaster of a championship decider right now. You know, we were looking so good at the start. Then we had the crash with Raikkonen and Sainz. And it was looking horrendous with both of us, myself and Gassi, out of the points. Then we're back here in this situation with five laps to go in this Grand Prix. And we've got the six points we need in our hands. But like a roller coaster, it keeps on going. And unfortunately... The safety car is going to come out at the absolute worst time ever. For the first time ever, I think, in his career mode, I did not want a safety car to come out. But now, it has been another spanner in the works. The F1 gods are thinking, no, hang on. This has been too simple at the end. Let's just chuck in another variable. The full safety car is out, and it's because of this man, Lewis Hamilton. He's retired out the lead of the Grand Prix, no less, with a mechanical issue going slow under the hotel section. He's going to park it up there on the right-hand side and cause the full safety car to come out now with five laps to go. And the thing is, with five laps to go, remember how bad my tyres were. F nearly 50% worn on the rear tyres of these old soft tyres. And with the full safety car, we're going to bunch right up there. And so the two Torosso is going to be on much fresher tyres. Even the Haas cars behind them are going to be on fresher tyres. And they're going to have a very good chance of jumping me. So I need to come in. I have no other choice. I have to come in for another pit stop here under the safety car. Get a free pit stop onto hyper soft tyres. Not even fresh ones, but not too worn. We're talking like 3%, 4%. Uh, worn hyper soft tyres but now as we come out we're down to P12 and we're back behind Gasly because remember Gasly already made his second pit stop of the afternoon earlier on onto his final set of ultras this is my third pit stop of the afternoon onto hypers and now we're here P12 here's P11 and so now we've got pretty much a three lap sprint race to the end of this Grand Prix. I've got to, one, overtake Gasly. Then I've got to overtake enough cars to get more than four points over Gasly in the championship. And the added caveat to this is, remember, Gasly is on pretty okay to, uh, old soft tyres. And if his car is fixed, which I think it is, I think he's resolved his mechanical issues, he's going to be going as quickly, if not more quickly, than I am because it's a Red Bull Honda. It's been so quick this entire season. And so I, I don't know. This is going to be... 
the hardest challenge I've had this entire season. I've got to somehow overtake cars, but also throw the cars back at Gasly as obstacles and keep him at bay and at, you know, more than an arm's length. So that's the challenge at hand now. We've got a three lap sprint race. Are you guys ready? Because we're going to go to green flags pretty darn soon. P12, Gasly P11. Here we go then, I stab into the unknown, I'm really nervous, I don't know how this is going to end up, but here we go now on the restart, right on the back of Gasly, can we make any sort of uh, inroads to him, no we can't, because Gasly is going fast, and look at him go, a massive dive from Pierre, down the inside of Vettel to just punt him off a little bit there, and so I overtake him as well, so thank you very much Gasly, we worked as a team there, in tandem to overtake uh, Vettel there, and so Gasly's really on it, he wants it as much as I do, and so we get held up by a Haskell there, I'm trying to shimmy and shake around, we going to spot a gap, we're going to dive into the inside, Gasly squeezes me, but it's a fair enough pass there, little to no contact made down the inside, and so a very, op uh, very opportunistic pass there to the inside of Gasly, we're up into P10 now, one championship point this is, we need more, and we need Gasly to have a no less, I need Gasly to not move from P11 there, but unfortunately that's going to happen, because we go around the outside of the Haas, the first Haas of Roman Grosjean under the hotel, just about squeezed through there, very aggressively, I will admit, but you know, needs must, up into P9 now, but Gasly's going to be right on the back of that has and is also going to have a good chance to overtake him because like I said I think I'm pretty sure that Red Bull Honda is now fixed. Gassi has no more mechanical issues on the car. He's going just as quickly as I would expect him to. There he goes now. A dive to the inside by Gasly. He's overtaking Grosjean then in one foul swoop into turn one. And so at the same time, meanwhile, straight away, I'm going to overtake uh, the teammate of Grosjean. Magnussen down the inside there. Nice move there. He gets out of the way. But look at that. Oh, the two Toro Rossos. They made contact there. They almost went off circuit on the blue runoff area. And so Ocon and Van Dorn do dueling. I think this still could be in it. There's still a chance. We're on the second last lap of the Grand Prix. But the two Toro Rossos, I didn't expect them to be that close to me once I overtook Magnussen. There was a huge gap on the mini-map but those two now are going hammering Tong there and they're fighting for their lives the two Toro Rosso cars are and they're almost taking each other off circuit as they do it and so we're right up here and so we could overtake them and get those two positions and that'll be up into P6 and that'll be eight points for us but the only issue is Gasly behind us is also getting move on there. Watch the top left Gasly's there. He's just overtaking Magnussen. He's a bit further back but he's done it he's overtaking the Dane and so he's up into P9 there. We're still P8 as we go on to the end of lap 27. The two Toro Rossos, they were fighting now. Now they're not. And Van Dorn's got some decent pace. But through the last corner, in the corners, he's pretty slow. But in a straight line, that Toro Rosso is so quick, we drift through the last corner. But look at that. Like a rocket ship. Van Dorn comes back around our outside. We have to squeeze him out to turn one. Here we go. We're up into P7. But now, it's the last lap of the Grand Prix. And Ocon is miles away from me. And in P7, this would be six points. But Gasly, remember, is in P9. So he's going to get two points. And so that's going to bring my total of points ahead of Gasly down to four points. And there was a four-point gap in the championship. And so we'll be level on points, technically. So who would win the championship? Well, I'm pretty sure it would go to Gasly because he's won eight Grand Prix. I've only won four. And so we go through to the last few corners of the last half of the Grand Prix. Ocon, in relative terms, is miles away from us, unfortunately, there. And so I can't do anything to chase after him to get P6. I'm going to finish up in P7 in this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But Pierre Gasly is going to get P9 and he's going to do just enough. What does he think this race is going to be the craziest championship finale decider I have ever witnessed on the F1 game in normal career mode terms? And the way it's wrapping up here, level on points with my championship rival but still losing the championship it's it's heartbreak but it's it's happened Gasly is the world champion there were questions at the start of the season as to whether this package could really go all the way but there's no question anymore what a special year it's been and here they are now the new Formula One world drivers champion it was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Absolutely insane. Insanity. That is the only word I can use to describe this Season 7 Championship Finale 
the race itself, and the final outcome. Level on points in the championship. And for the first time ever, I've had a championship decided by the number of race wins in this season. Gasly had eight, I had four, which I think speaks more about me than him. I think I did, not to toot my own horn, but to only win four races in an inferior car, you know, mind you, is the fourth best car on the grid for the entire season. Red Bull had the fastest car at some points, and most of the time was the second best. But that's how consistent I was through the season, that with half the number of wins, I was able to match his points. But... You know, the, the rules are the rules. He's won eight, he's won eight races. It, he's been the faster man overall. And so all I can say is fair play. GG for the first time ever in history on this F1 channel has Pierre Gasly bested me in the championship fight there. You know, it was bound to come at some point. But, I mean, j to do it like this, level on points, man. Level on points. Absolutely berserk. And so Red Bull Honda also beat Sauber in the Constructors fight, unfortunately. We only come in second place, myself and Leclerc. I think it was a noble effort, but second place only for us. But, I mean, the race itself, so crazy. I know there's going to be some people that said, why did I pit under the safety car? You know, if I didn't pit, maybe I could have got the points. It wouldn't have mattered, because either way, you saw Gasly did not pit. Either way, he wouldn't have pit. If I had not pit, I would have been in P6 as we went on the restart. But you saw how bad the tyre wear was for those two Toro Rosso cars. I don't think that... And my tyre wear was a lot worse than those two Toro Rosso cars, mind you. So I honestly do not think we could have actually held that P6 position. And so at best, we would have been down to P7. And so the exact same scenario would have happened. Because either way, Gasly was always going to overtake some cars there on, 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 you know, on, a, on fresh rubber in a quick Red Bull car. And so, you know, we went for it. We overtook him and we just couldn't get that last position, that last Toro Rosso that could have sealed it for us. Oh, so in the end, there we go. We've lost this championship. We didn't even get any trophy. We didn't win the Constructors either. But guys, if you did enjoy that championship decider and the entire season, no less, be sure to smash that like button. If you can try and aim for over 2,000 likes, guys, on what was a crazy finale race to wrap up a season, that would be absolutely amazing. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of that finale and the, the outcome of it. If you're on your own, dear, you can subscribe for weekly for on content. We're going to end this off with a few weird words from our PR agent. I think seeing as it's the end of the season, now is a good time to talk about your less than ideal record this year. My job is to negotiate on your behalf, but you're not giving me much to work with here. Plus, this isn't exactly doing my career any good, so I need you to shape up, for both our sakes. So let me get this straight. I managed to wrestle an inferior car, the Sauber, that was the fourth or fifth best car on the grid for a lot of the season, up into level on points in the Drivers' Championship with half the number of wins as my competitor, and yet you think I did a horrendous and pretty poor job this season. Okay, once again, the F1 game and my PR agent have no clue what they're talking about. To be honest, to be honest, to be honest I'm surprised they've not fired me like Ferrari fired me in Season 5. Ferrari fired me for a lot less than this. So I'm surprised, actually, Emma, that you've not fired me, to be honest. I'm actually, I'm actually... I'm actually disappointed you've not fired me. I expected better. I expected more craziness from you, to be honest. But uh, there you go. A very odd way to end Season 7. And I'm going to leave you guys on a cliffhanger. And I'm going to let you guys wonder and ponder what our plans are for Season 8. But yes, we will be back in two days' time for Season 8 of F1 2018 Vanilla Career Mode. I've been Arava. Hope you enjoyed your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.